That is a learning management system integration standards. The word learning management system is not a very new word for you guys because you are using this LMS system since three years. If I'm talking about, it's not about the three years. You are using LMS system in a Jazan University. If I'm talking, you are using this from 2006, the JASU, the JAMP, and then you are using, and then using the Blackboard mostly. But most of the use of any of the LMS system, if we am talking about the worldwide, or if I'm talking about in a university in a Saudi Arabia, or even in a Jazan University, the usability of a learning management system increased after the 2020 pandemic. Now let's move toward the things what we are going to learn today. The first thing that is the e-learning standards. Today we are going to talk about some standards which is connected with the e-learning. If I'm talking about the standards, nothing in a, if I'm talking in a digital world or the traditional world, we should have some standards to implement anything. So it's not possible to implementation of our e-learning without any standards. If I elaborate this terminology, the e-learning standards, basically these are the set of common rules that apply to content, authoring software and learning management system. They provide all stakeholders with guidelines for designing and developing content, deploying it across platforms and ensure the integration across the devices. If I make it easy or in an easy words for you guys, so you can see that this is a basically some of the instruction, set of instruction, which is needed to be, uh, be aware with the authoring tools, the authoring tools you are using to create your content, to end, the uh, must be familiar with the learning management system and also uh, the compatibility, the integration and everything would be a very uh, integrated with each other across all the devices. That is basically the purpose of the e-learning standards. In the current world, tracking learning performance, analysis and feedback is as important as creating and engaging content. Organizations across the globe are emphasizing on tracking technologies as well as smooth inter uh, integration between the various learning management systems. To make things smoother, the e-learning industry adhere to learning technology standards that allow easy content distributions and provide smart metric across platform. So the next question is um, these popular e-learning standards now we are going to talk about some of the standards. What are the, these standards? Basically, I just mentioned here the three names. These are the popular standards. The first one is AICC, the Scrum, and TINCAM. Today, we are going to understand about these standards, what actually the meaning of these standards, where they use, is it still using or an old one, which is the most uh, least one uh, we are using right now. The e-learning industry adhered to learning technology center that allow easy content distributions and provide smart metric across platform. So most used standards are AICE, CC, Scrum, and TINCAM. These are the types of e-learning standards. Okay, what is AICC? AICC is a very early e-learning standard. It was created in 1988 by the Aviation Industry Computer-Based Training Committee to standardize the material and technology used to train airline workers. If you are seeing this diagram, you will be able to understand the, how it works, the AICC standard. 
that is uses basically the http aicc communication protocol to communicate between a learning management system and the course content the hacp methodology is a quite straightforward using an html form and simple text string to transform uh, the information to the form of the uh, lms so here is a two integrations between the lms and aicc course aicc course would be transferred to the lms by the html form and the connected by this text string now the next question reason to consider the aicc where we can use the aicc as i mentioned this one is the oldest one but still it's used but still in many ways we can use it it's an extremely old by the technology standard is there anything you can think that there is anything newer standards there are the many newer standards are available is it still uh, usable then we can say yes in the form of security aicc is a more secure it supports highly secure https data transfer between the content and the lms and the second thing is deployment flexibility the aicc content can be sorted on a separate server or domain from one where the lms is hosted which allow for more flexible development configurations so these are the two main features you can say of the aicc which is usable for the different if it's if anyone uh, related to these kind of the features needed then they can use the aicc standards now the next one that is what is a scrum basically this terminology is more familiar with you guys maybe you just uh, see see this one in our lms system in a blackboard while you just going to upload your content course you will be able to use this standard package to upload your content we will discuss about this in a detail but before that let me explain you what is basically the meaning of scrum and how we can use it and how it works The meaning of uh, the storm is the shareable content object reference model was the first published by the US government's advanced distributed learning project in 2000. And it is a de facto standard of e-learning content. The standard is in fact, a set of technical standards that were designed to address the issues of its predecessor data EICC which we issues uh, just faced by the EICC, we just can say that we remove that one and enhance the capability of the Scrum to give a better outcomes. Scrum provides a communication method and data model that allow e-learning content and an LMS to work together. All the training materials for one course are packed into a Scrum package, a zip, uh, you can say uh, zip files and contain files in a specific hierarchy to deliver your e-courses via LMS Storm has its three main component. If I'm talking about the component of uh, Storm packages, that is the content packages, the runtime and sequencing. Basically, the content packaging is uh, output of a course in a zip file and the runtime that launches the course in a web browser and the sequencing this dedicate how you learn or navigate the course so these are the three important things if you are seeing this diagram you can clearly get the idea how it's work we have the first one that is the e-course content atom and then it would be converted to the scrum package and then it would be integrated with the lms system or upload to the lms system so what are the features of Scrum which make it considerable. So the first one is easy content creation. Most Scrum content authoring tools are quite straightforward and user-friendly. You don't have to be coding genuine uh, to transform a PowerPoint deck, for example, into an interactive e-learning courses. 
We have a mini authoring tool. I will discuss further slides that what is actually the authoring tool. We will revise. We already had the sessions on the authoring tool, but we will revise again how many authoring tools we have and how we can get the SCOM packages from that. The second thing is sequencing score. You can set rules for how long a learner has to stay on a certain page or a section before they are allowed to progress and how much time they need to spend on a course overall. Maybe you attend any of the course, which is an um, online course, and uh, you just uh, check it out. That they, there is a summer progress bar. You will be grow, uh, going through the every page, and your progress will be increased. So this is like a, one giving you a one complete sequence. And the third one, the awesome tool support. Almost all authoring tools support both versions of SCOM. We have a different three versions of SCOM, but mostly we are using the SCOM version 1.2. The next one is the LMS port. Almost all LMS vendors support SCOM content, so migration courses from an old system to a new one is relatively easy. If you are going to change your LMS system or if you are going to change or upgrade your uh, LMS system, that's no problem at all because it's a flexibility or LMS support that it will be converted easily toward the next one. Easy course catalog building, the SCRUM specifics uh, specifies a minimum set of metadata that make it practical for you to build catalog of content regardless of where the content comes from just you can just uh, just try to be a single authoring tool and content provider provider no need to be uh worry about the where the contents come from just need to be an authoring tool and just need to be a any of the content provider to integrate with it the next one is mix and match content you can mix and match content from different sources within a course. For example, e-learning developed in a one authoring tool can be mixed with the other Scrum packages developed in other tools. So we can use a different authoring tools. Some of, some of the authoring tools are specifically give you a one type of creation. For example, one authoring tool give you an option to create a video or one, another authoring tool give you an option of to creating your um, slides or content and other content. And you want to be merged both of them, then it's possible that you can mix and match the content. Standardized giving obst uh, uh, content can be, you can say, all the standards well documented in a zip format. You can just make it a one complete sequence and standardized. That is the third one, the tin can. XAPI. The experience API or X API for short or tin can that is used another name is a newer e-learning standard that let you collect data about a wide range of experiences a learner has both online and offline. This API application programming interface captured data about a learner or a group's activities in a consistent format and from many different technologies so this one is the newest one more technique uh, technologies involved and more more features are involved in it you can say the other uh, different standards you can use uh, online but by this standard you can use it by the online and offline as well with x api uh, people learn from the interaction with world content with other learners and much more these interaction can happen anywhere and a single and even where learner could occur. And all of these actions can be recorded with X API. And when an actively is to be recorded, the application sends your statements to a learner learning record store. You can see by the image that all the content is sending to the learning record store. A learning record store is a unique feature of X 
uh, X API that records all the statement uh, made and share these statement with other LRS and and you can say the LRS can exist on its own and can live inside an LMS system. So it is live integrated in the LMS system. Now, what is the reason to consider this standard? So let's have a talk about the feature of this standard that the first one is record almost any activity. The structure of X API statement uses nouns, verbs, and objects. So you can record almost any activity you can think of. That is the best feature. The next one is flexible learning histories. Experience API allows learner record store to talk to each other. LRS can share data and transcripts and learner experience can follow from one LRS to another. If you are talking about the personal data lockers, that is your learners can have their own personal data locker with their personal learning information inside them. They can be a transporter between different organizations and it's all devices support. Any enabled device can send X API statement, for instance, mobile phones, hardware simulations, electronic games, and medical devices. A constant network connection is necessary and occasional connectivity is fine. And the most important feature is tracking outside an LMS. You will be able to track your course content outside the LMS system. You can track learning events without being restricted by LMS functionality. Tracking can begin wherever the learner is and on whatever devices they are using. So this one is the third one and the newest one standard. Now let's have a look the overview of all these three standards to make it more understandable for you guys, what actually they work, how does they work and what is actually the meaning, how they are different in a feature based. So let's have a look at the overview of these standards. In today's digital age, learning is more virtual than ever. E-learning instructors worldwide design their courses for LMS platforms that make it available to their learners. Over time, e-learning has adopted standards to increase cross-platform compatibility. AICC is the oldest and uses HTTP to communicate with the LMS platform. It no longer receives additional updates, however, and is considered outdated. Still, many pros think AICC is more secure, and various organizations continue to use it. Most platforms accept AICC-compliant content. After AICC came SCORM, which was developed to counter AICC's deficiencies, there are several versions of SCORM thus far, and SCORM 1.2 is the most widely used. SCORM uses JavaScript to communicate with the LMS, and is quite easy to follow. It only requires an XML document and a proper zip file format. The newest standard on the block is XAPI. Although it isn't widely supported because it is a new standard, it is still considered the most versatile. XAPI can be used outside of LMS platforms and allows creators to administer courses through mobile apps. XAPI also enables users to track progress offline. Each e-learning standard brings something different to the table. Whatever you choose, make sure you start by considering the desired outcomes for your course and the best LMS platform for the job. So, hope uh, now you are able to understand the difference between these standards and how these standards work and where we use it. Now, the question is about the SCOM. SCOM is basically a most used standard, and we already using this standard with LMS Blackboard. Now, I'm going to talk about the SCOM and let's have a look how it's work and the how we can find the different features of SCOM and its integration with the LMS system. Everyone in e-learning is talking about SCOM, but what exactly is SCOM and how can you easily create a SCOM package? First, a few words about the main ingredients of e-learning, a course, an authoring tool, and an LMS. 
course. A course is a package. So here is important thing to note is the three main important things the first one is LMS tool and course. These are the three things to create or connect or using the these kind of the standards. Actually, you can say this is a basically a process. You need a course. You need some tools, some authoring tools, and then you need an LMS system to make it integrated in it. So let's have a look. ...of learning materials, texts, videos, and quizzes. An authoring tool is a software for creating courses. An LMS is an online platform that delivers courses to learners. It's very important that all the ingredients communicate seamlessly. Let's say you have a new authoring tool or you're looking for an LMS. You need to be sure that they speak the same language, right? That is exactly what SCORM does. It sets the rules for transferring information between all ingredients. A SCORM package is a zip archive with learning materials like quizzes, videos, or texts wrapped in the unified code. That allows any SCORM compliant LMS to deal with SCORM courses that were created with any authoring tool. Now, your LMS can not only deliver SCORM courses to your trainees, but also register their progress. And you can create a particular sequence of learning items inside the course, as well as track learners' results. For example, how much time it took a learner to complete a course and what scores they got. With an authoring tool, you can create online courses from scratch and enhance them with videos, quizzes, and other interactivities. And then you just hit the Publish to SCORM button and your SCORM package is ready. Now it's time to choose the right authoring tool to hit the button in. iSpring, the right software for creating So, now the main focus points are the course content, the authoring tool, and the LMS. If I'm talking about the course content, the e-learning course content, you are all the um, familiar with this, how many types of the course content you have. Let me uh, just revise it. The course content of the e-learning e -learning course content, if I'm specifically talk about it, it contains a graphic, infographic, the textual context, and some of um, videos, some audios, some 3D animations, and these kind of uh, 3D vi uh, videos, and these kind of different things to make a one complete course. Actually, we had uh, many uh, sessions on it, how you will be able to create your online course content, how you will be able to create your engaging online uh, course content. So these all are the parts of the content you must have to make. Uh, just uh, these content, the, these online content, you need uh, some of the authoring tool who will help you to create these content. And you can just merge all, all of the uh, get different categories like the infographic, graphic, the PPT slide, the videos, the audios, in, by uh, just making a one complete course by, these, by the help of these authoring tools. And the third one is LMS system, the learning management system. We have a different learning management system, uh, but we are using the Blackboard and mostly Blackboard uh, is using in the Saudi Arabia, but we have the other, the Moodle, the Canvas, the desire to learn and the Blackboard is mostly used. So we have a different uh, learning management system. Uh, we have a different authoring tool, some of the paid, some of the free, and we have a different uh, variety of the course content. And you can see different categories of the e-learning course, course content. Let's move toward the most important part, the authoring tools. An authoring tool could be any software solution you can use to create digital content. That would be a software solution and a digital content. You need uh, some of the softwares which will help you to create your digital content. So how many categories of these tools, these authoring tools, uh, you can say they can use as a single purpose tool. Some of the tools are just giving you one uh, category of a content creation and some activity creation tools, some course development and presentation tools, some journal presentation tools, testing and assessment tools. 
we already heard that uh, we we can use the different authoring tools content and we can merge mix and match in a one uh, package in a scrum package or in one place and so it's not a problem if we have a different authoring tools we can create the uh, content accordingly and then we can just merge that content to make a one complete course if i elaborate this terminology to make it more understandable for you guys that what is an e-learning authoring tool an e-learning authoring tool is a software that used to build the e-learning content from the small piece of information like text images uh, audio recordings and videos in addition to helping you uh, glue various media together into entire e-learning course so now it's make easy statement that it's not giving you a separate things but also giving you one glue to various media you can just together in a one e-learning course they have uh, some unique features that can only be used for trainings for example some e-learning authoring tool allow you to create software simulations and other let you uh, to build the quizzes so these are the some special features you can say we have an authoring tool to uh, giving you a facility to create your content more engaging and more variety of your content so let's have a talk about the free authoring tools. How many we have a free authoring tools and how we can use it to create our course content. And almost all the authoring tools have a capability to uh, just uh, uh, export your content in a Scrum package. And then uh, now we are just make, uh, make understand this process that we have a one course content. Now we are moving toward to make it a, a one complete course, e-learning course by the authoring tools. So now we are talking about the authoring tools, how many e-learning authoring tools we have and we can use. Here I just listed up the nine, but we have a many more others. You can just explore the different authoring tools that you can use. Even uh, you can use um, simple uh, uh, just uh, for the one purpose if you are using for the just making one video you can use it and if you want to make it uh, just um, uh, glue a different uh, um, uh, media in one uh, uh, complete course design you can use uh, the different uh, authoring tool as well for example we have the ad app the course lab is easy movely adaptive view crowd wisdom adapt glow marker 3.0 and Kentisha. So I'm going to tell you about one of them to giving you idea how the course design and how we can use the authoring tool to create a one complete e-learning course. We are going to discuss about the ad app and we will see how it works. Okay, so back at the admin portal, we are going to click on a course. I'm going to keep clicking on gender bias just because we've been using it. After the sign up on the adapt.com, you will be get the admin panel where you will be able to create your course and you will just create your lesson. You can see this dashboard here. Uh, you will be able to create your content. Even you can do this uh, course uh, content creation within the blackboard, but I'm giving you a more uh, varieties to you guys to if you are, uh, you want to be explore the different things, which is uh, just free of cost and you just sign up and then you will be able to get this admin panel uh, for the branding video etc i'm going to click on the lesson that i want to edit in the authoring tool and then i'm going to click in, on this button in the top right corner edit lesson content and as soon as i click that i am in the authoring tool the authoring tool you have a preview uh slide here this is this is completely interactive and it coincides with here, your list of uh, templates and slides. And this is where you can manipulate those templates and slides. Uh, here's where you would type in your answers, the, the answer field, the core message field, the reinforcements, et cetera. Actually, you can do things also like the social learning tab that we'll uh, go over later. Um, you, you have the scoring tab here, and you also have the stars tab here. But to get into the authoring tool, the, the real, the template library, you would click on this plus sign, add a new slide. 
And as soon as you're there, you have the whole toolbox full of templates that you can use. I'm just going to go over some of these sections here. And I, I'm going to go over the, the uh, sections here of these templates, but I really encourage you to explore and experiment because at EdApp, we make the tools for you to be as creative as you can be. And there are things you will discover in all of these templates. We have many templates. I can't possibly go over every single one of them, but what I can do is show you the kinds of uh, templates that we have in our library. So on the first tab, which is on the left, is the content, or excuse me, are the content slides. Uh, the content templates are perfect for transferring knowledge and introducing new content to your learners uh, for the first time. So this is, does not require a right or wrong answer. This is purely knowledge transfer that's happening here. And if you see, we have things like media collection. This is where you can upload video, photo, and sound. You have a peer authoring template, which we'll go over uh, later. You have a uh, parallax. This is for those that are really savvy with their images and layers. You can give it a sort of 3D effect. If you move your mobile phone, the images will move. It's a little more complicated, but it's pretty simple to use. Uh, the scratch to reveal. This is a great uh, template to use just to show your learners the sort of range of motion. What it does is it allows learners, I'm gonna click on this, it allows learners to uh, touch the screen and see what's underneath. And we put this usually pretty early, actually it's early in this lesson. And the reason for that is just, we like to show our learners uh, at the beginning of a lesson, just how interactive uh, EdApp can be, and how interactive their courses are, okay. So underneath the content templates, we have the concept templates. And this is to reinforce singular concepts by having your learners uh, recreate and filter through statements. Um, this is a great way of just checking knowledge. We suggest every one to two slides to have some sort of interaction slide and concept slides are part of those interactions. Um, I use these ones quite a bit. Uh, the film, the missing word is great, and strikeout is fun to use. The strikeout, your let, uh, learners can just draw all over the screen if they wanted to, but they can also strike out the incorrect word. Okay, great. If they click OK, done, boom. Okay, underneath concepts, we have multiple choice. These uh, templates reinforce uh, key concepts by having learners identify the correct answer from a pool of options. And if you see here, we have many ways of doing that. Uh, we have the circle the answer, which is great. Another template that you draw on the screen and circle the correct answer. We have a speech bubble template, and this is good for interactions with either customers or other people or coworkers or students. This is just a great situational template to, to use. The numbers template, uh, ask number-based questions with templates designed from the ground up for numerical reinforcement. And this is really good for uh, thinking of ratios. Here, this is sort of a ratio. You can say, oh, this is 30%, 20%, others 50, et cetera. Uh, you have pie charts here where you can select uh, percentages, but then you also have these number sentences where you can test facts, and things like that, and they, they're pretty great. Um, I'll show you one of these number templates here. I think we have a number sentence, and you can just see the movement here of how the numbers go up. It's, it's pretty pretty awesome template. It's very simple, pretty awesome. Okay, under the number templates, we have the relationship templates, and they really reinforce connections between related concepts. Um, this is a great one. This is another draw on the screen one where you would have a concept and maybe you match it with its description, etc. cetera. Um, it also has your drag and match options are here. So where you would drag objects and here, this is where you would put your PNGs that, that can have that sort of see-through effect on part of them. Next is the uh, very popular aspect of that app and it's the gaming slides. And although those interactions you could all earn stars throughout those interactions. The gaming slides are really like a big, okay, sit down, we're about to just have fun with some games and you have an opportunity to win many stars. Um, some of the best ones, well, they're all great, 
but the true or false is a very intellectually stimulating game. Yeah, it's a swipe left or right situation. Um, you swipe true, you swipe false, and actually you can uh, change what those uh, terms are. So this is completely customizable. A lot of our games are customizable and interactions. So I would say experiment, see what you can do, what you can change, how you can make it yours. Uh, there's a lot, a lot, a lot of possibilities you could uh, do with these games. Uh, the memory game is great where you match tiles. You could either match images or words with their descriptions or concepts, etc. And once you match them, oh, let's see if I can match this one. There you go. So you can see uh, you have a timer and a score point or scoreboard right here. Okay, moving on. We also have a uh, jumble word template. Um, this you would type in a few words, and this is good if you want keywords to come across. I would suggest this this uh, game here. And the letter jumble is great for that as well. If you, there are just key concepts, words, and phrases you want the learner to walk away with, these are great games to end on. And they, you don't have to have a game always at the end of a lesson. You could have it in the middle. You could have it in the beginning. It, it's all up to you. It's completely customizable to your needs. Um, under the games templates, we have these survey slides. Um, these gather feedback from learners about your lessons or about their own experiences. This free text could actually be used for many uh, things, not just how would you improve the lesson. It could say, what would you like to learn more about in the future? And that could dictate the courseware that you'll make in the future. Um, we also have a quantitative rating slide, which is zero to five. How confident are you in your understanding after taking this lesson? That's always great. And this multiple choice, which is great. You will be able to see the specific answers that your uh, learners check here. And the quadrant, which is also a kind of quantitative way of saying I'm confident here, not so confident in this area, etc. In the advanced uh, templates, they allow you to take your lessons further by unlocking certain features and presenting your content. Um, here you have your external URL. You can embed you can embed a web page into your lesson. You can have a question pool, kind of traditional instructional design, where you have a bunch of questions at once. You can also have a scorn package to play a scorn package if you need to. Underneath advanced, you have your favorites. This is where you can mark the templates that you like to use, and this is this is great for learners as well, or excuse me, admins. And it's also great for the community as a whole as templates uh, actually have a number of how many times they're favorited underneath each one of them. So that's part of the data-driven learning model that uh, EdApt uses. And here you have an import uh, section or an import button. And this allows you to import slides from other courses in your, uh, in your account. So if you want to take a, a slide from another lesson into your, to this lesson, it would adapt all of the branding that this lesson has and integrate right away. We really find that the sweet spot of micro lessons is between 8 to 12 slots. Uh, the reason for that is completion rates are just much, much higher when they're around 8 to 12 slides. So don't you think this is a one complete package for you guys to create a one interactive a complete course. Uh, one more thing I want to show you guys about the ad app. Let me my, uh, share my screen of home. Is it visible? The Chrome screen? Let's have a look. The features we can avail in an ad app. Okay. Okay, you can see, look at this. You can uh, see my screen, my uh, Chrome, my Chrome screen, you can type in a chat box. Hello, you can uh, see my screen. Is it visible to all of you?
Okay. Okay, you can see here that you can use it free and you can just see here you have a different features you can avail that is unlimited shareable courses and the unlimited users library of thousand plus editable courses built in gamification features unlimited videos and audios upload and customize branding and turn to four by five online sport so these are much more and enough for you guys to create a one complete e-learning course and you have uh, just a different uh, features are here and which is i think according to me it's the much uh, to when you are going to create a one complete course and if you want to get a uh, some some of um, advanced features so you will be just pay the two dollar per month and the other features um is available here too but it's just two dollars to five dollars but you can use the free one and uh, you have uh, many features are here and you just uh, saw in a video as well how you will be able to avail these features okay let's move towards the next one Okay, so, okay, so now the next authoring tool, the Camtasia is also one of the authoring tool. Now we are going to see how we will be able to export this Chrome package uh, from Camtasia and then we will be able to upload the Blackboard as we are using the Blackboard and the Blackboard is um, just supporting the scrum packages and we have a different authoring tool let's have a look how we will be able to export it and then upload it into the blackboard So this is the interface of the Camtasia and uh, while you've done all your uh, creations and everything, uh, you can see here is the media bin and here is the different recordings, audio, those videos, it's already uh, created and now just click on a share button. This uh, wizard will be open and you will just see the dimensions, the format, the description and now you are going to move toward the next one. See, here is the different uh, varieties of formats uh, available. So you just uh, select the MP4 uh, for just export this one. You will select the slide, the video setting, the audio setting and different options are available here. Quizzing option is also available here. and you just click on the options and you just fill up if you want to fill these all uh, options here is the option report quiz result using scrum if you want to track your quiz by scrum you just select this one this option and the set the passing scores completion requirement and produce zip file these are the Scrum options. Here is the name of uh, the video or your production, whatever. And then you will select the path and you will just finish. Now you are just logging to your Blackboard Learn. Go to the content and just select the content back at Scrum. Browse my computer. You will select that file you just download from uh the Camtasia okay it's set in as a format now while you just open it you can add it the title so the other thing Make this form available. Number of attempts you can select here. The grading is also available here with this form. You can select the points here, the due date, timing of the grading. It will be appear on a grid center. You just click on a submit. 
and here you are you just complete the setting of uh, this uh, content that is uploaded by this chrome package and uh, you can uh, explore it more you can uh, just uh, using the other authoring tools we just use the camtasia to export this chrome package you can use the other authoring tool to export your strong package and upload in a content uh, by the content package chrome and then you can do the different setting and you can just check it out uh, how it's worked so this is basically a complete uh, scenario about we just start talking about let me revise some uh, some of the points we just talk about uh, talking uh, we start uh, talking about uh, the standards the e-learning standards we just study about the eicc the strong the think can most used standards of the e-learning then the connectivity between the course content the authoring tool then, then lms system then we just uh, see the briefly the authoring tools how we can use it how many free options we have and how we can utilize it to make a better or best uh, e-learning content uh, one complete course uh, development and creation you can say and then how we will be able to connect or integrate that one with our lms system the blackboard system which we are using so this is the one complete scenario which will help you uh, to complete make a one complete a new thing to uh, make your content more uh, flexible easy to use easy to track easy to get the performance uh, uh, within the blackboard system you have uh, many other options in a blackboard system uh, but most of us are not exploring it and using it but today i hope you learn uh, about it and you will be uh, going to use this one and at, at least at once you just apply it and you will be uh, just able to see the different outcomes by this. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, I hope I explained well. If you have any question or you want to me to revise anything for you guys, please tell me. If you want to unmute your uh, microphone, you can. You have any question you can ask me and also tell me now you are clear about these standards Thank you so much. You will get the recording of these all sessions and uh, inshallah, uh, let me share um, the recording as well. You will get it once I upload it. Thank you guys. yes one more thing before before leaving please replace your name uh, okay uh, right now we can't uh, use the x api standard with the blackboard learn right now we are using the scrum package but uh, i think uh, with the blackboard uh, learn ultra maybe we are able to use the x api But right now, Blackwood is supporting the Scrum packages and Scrum standards. Uh, what about the certificates? Yes, it's, uh, it would be available on online. You just need to be a register for this training. Uh, you have a registration, uh, registration link. Uh, let me share the registration link with you guys. You just register and even uh, if you not register for the training, you just replace your name with your employee ID. We uh, um, just uh, take your employee ID and we will just create a certification for you guys by the attendance as well.
If you can see the others, they write their name and then their employee ID. That uh, uh, would be good for us to um, uh, grab your employee ID. It's not like this, in, not in a chat, please, ma'am. Uh, just uh, um, rename your name, your name, and then write up your employee ID. You share the registration link as well to make it easy for you guys to. You just open this link, uh, log in by your uh, email ID, uh, username of. Um, Jazan University and the password, and then uh, go to uh, inside the and uh, select the training session, and you will be get the certificate. Your registration is important, and even though if you didn't register, no problem. You just uh, replace your name with your employee ID to get the certifications. <clears throat> 